today we're turning this unused wall into this pegboard storage vinyl display craft room organization and we'll show you how we did it right now what is up welcome back this year in 2020 i'll be doing all the intros just kidding <laughs> do you like to do it builder make it great and that's what we do on this channel every week so you should go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe and tick that bell because like I just said, we do this every week. This week we're making some pegboard storage. Something for our paint, our tools, our vinyl. It's become a cluttered mess up here in our studio and I can't work like this. I yes. can't work like this. No. <laughs> Right, so we're looking at an empty wall on the other side of this camera and we're going to fill it with storage space. I need somewhere to stack my vinyl so I can see it. I need somewhere to put all these paints, all these tiny little bottles of paints. What else? Tools. 57 bottles of Mod Podge. I have no <laughs> idea why we have Mod so much Podge. Mod Podge. <laughs> we're going to gather all of our materials. <laughs> We ran to our local home improvement shop, Lowe's, and we picked up our, our materials. We got a full sheet of this half inch birch plywood. Looks nice. Very nice. Finely sanded. It was like 50 bucks. Yes, it was expensive, but. Yeah, I think it was like 42 bucks. It should cover the whole wall. And then we picked up some one by twos, three of them. And some one inch dowel rods. Big fat fatty dowel rods. We just started with three. We're probably going to need some more. Oh, and then we picked up a one by six, but I misplaced that. So. <laughs> Step one. Make all your cuts. <laughs> like I said, we cheated. We had uh, the guy at our home improvement shop make our cuts for us. They cut three equal pieces at 32 inches right there. The, the guy took his time, he did a great job, yes, he, he didn't rush through it and rip it. That way we could get him in the car. Yeah, we didn't cheat. That was super convenient. Yeah, it was super convenient. <laughs> it's only like, what, 50 cents a cut? First yeah. cut's free. I don't yeah. know, they didn't, they didn't charge us I don't think they've ever charged us for a cut. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. For them. I guess if you got out of control, it would be like, fine, 50 cents every yeah. cut. <laughs> yeah. I want thousand cuts. <laughs> And then we're going to go cut these uh, one by twos down to 30 inches so that there'll just be a little inch overlap so that you won't see the backer. We're going to put the one by two on the wall and then hang the plywood on that so it's not directly on the wall. Give you some gap. Gap it! Those are the only cuts right now. So we're going to jump right into uh, step two. We're going to drill a million holes a million holes so we're making our own pegboard and i think the spacing we will want is four inch holes four inches apart every four inches down so how many holes does that end up being babe oh, it was like 231 holes there's like 77 holes on each <laughs> board and we're doing three boards so that's uh a lot of freaking holes. <laughs> That's all right. I, I'm gonna put together a little jig to hopefully help us do all these holes. At least keep the holes straight. And so like step 1A, we're gonna make all of our measurements. Four inches and four inches and four inches and four inches. And then we're gonna snap a chunk. Now we're gonna use a chalk line. So Daddy's a little helper. <laughs> so we're just gonna run the line over where we just made our little marks on both sides of the board. Pop! Alright, is that gonna be too many holes? I don't know, what do you think? Is there going to be too many holes? It's going to be plenty of holes. Alright, that's all we got so far. 
Ooh. I'm gonna do a little jig to keep my drill up and down vertical so I don't have wonky crazy caddy wampus holes. Caddy wampus. Alright, so there's my jig. It's one foot tall, made out of one by fours. And I offset one side so that it's low to allow for my fingers. That way, because if the dowels go in and the holes are off centered, not 90 degrees drilled, then your pegs are going to be crooked and your shelves are going to be crooked. <laughs> We're going to use this giant one inch Forstner bit to make a perfect little hole for your dowels. Yeah, I was gonna say, should we put a little... Uh... Oh, and it broke out the back. So we just poked the hole through with this Forstner bit, and it chipped up the back. Kind of kind of got that last little piece of plywood, that last layer, chipped. So we're going to try a different hole saw. We're going to try a little hole saw, not a forcing bit. So this one will chip away all the wood as it goes down, and this one will create a hole. And if you go too deep, you got to try to dig that hole out, a little plug with a screwdriver. But I don't want to dig that hole out with a screwdriver, so we'll start the hole. Then we'll flip it and hit it on the other side too. We also decided maybe we don't want to do every four inches. So we're going to see what it looks like spaced. Yeah. Whoops, maybe I'll go all the way through. Whew. But it left a better hole. There's a hole saw hole, forcing our bit hole. So I think we're gonna do all of them with the little hole saw hole. To save some time, I decided that I'm gonna lay the one that we did the blue chalk line on, on top of our other two, and I'm gonna drill a pilot hole through all the holes we wanna do, and then come back and make them a hole. So we're going to clamp them together first. I put a little piece of greed painter's tape on here so I don't go too deep, so I don't come all the way through so that I can flip it and do the other side and make it nice and smooth. One panel done. Oh, I missed the hole. <laughs> All right, now one panel done. So holes. Alright, all of our peg holes are done. Looking very holy. Alright, since we're using a 1x6 as our shelf, we put our dowels in the boards. Well, first we set them on a 1x2, like it's going to be on the wall. Then we put the dowels in. Now we're going to mark it. All 
Alright, we're gonna go cut a bunch of dowels, however long this is. Alright, so we'll go make a couple of shelves at 16 inches, some at 24, and cut a bunch of dowel rods at... Mm -hmm. 6 and 3 quarters? Step three! Now we're gonna clear coat it. We're gonna give it a coat of polyurethane. We like the, uh, the natural wood look. Looks pretty psychedelic. Look at that. Ooh. So we're just gonna give it a clear coat. Step four! Now we're gonna make some boxes, some shelves, some bungee cord things for our pegboard. We're gonna start with a box that we're gonna make for our vinyl. We're gonna keep our, well we're gonna try, what, two? Yes, yeah, so we're gonna show you two methods on how to mount the vinyl onto this board or how we're thinking. One will be the box method, which I think will look nice, but the other is to use bungee cord between two dowels and a little shelf at the bottom and then just slide them right in there. So. Yeah, so we'll try, we're going to try both. We're going to start with our little shelf or our little box. So I cut some 1x3s down to 23 inches and then 4 inches and then a 1x6 I cut down to 23 inches. One and a quarter inch brad, the nail, not the guy. <laughs> We're not putting a back on it. We're just using three sides. The pegboard will be the back. And then he's had a pretty cool idea for how to mount this box onto the pegboard. Here, let me take this label off. Oh yeah, this little label's on. We're gonna use these one inch brackets around the one inch dowel. Bam. There we go. That's what we got so far. Okay, so what do we need? Can you hear me? <laughs> Gotta pull it tighter. I might let go. Go let it go! <laughs> <laughs> uh, we put this green painter's tape up so that we'd be able to map out where the stuff is on the wall. Like where the boards will be, where the gaps will be, and now where we're finding the studs. Kim's great at finding studs. <laughs> Step five. Now we're going to use these one by twos as our mounting hardware to mount them to the wall. It'll keep it off of the wall a little bit. Give those pegs a little more meat to bite into. All right. Kim's marking on all these panels where they're going to hit the 1x2 behind them. And I'm going to come in and give them a little pilot hole. Alright, now we're just attaching the panels to the 1x2 brackets using some 1 inch wood screws.
Step six. I can't do it because I have way too many pegs. All right, we're going to put the pegs on the wall and then hang like all of the stuff we made to hang on them. <laughs> uh, this was a beginner to intermediate project. If you're comfortable with making uh, small cuts and drilling a bunch of holes, you can totally do this project. Easy. Took us an afternoon, probably five hours, maybe 70 or 80 dollars. Yep, and it all started because I wanted some vinyl storage. And this is great. It looks beautiful and it's expandable. We can add an additional bungee cord right here and double up all the storage that I have. But this is all the vinyl that I had, so it's all I need right now. Yeah. <laughs> I love the fact that it's modular and configurable. We can move it around, change it around. We don't know if we want to keep this as our background. Should this be our typical channel background? Or do we turn the camera back around and, and make it what it used to be? You guys vote down below. Let us know in a comment if we should keep this as our background. Or go back to that. Or go back to the other way. <laughs> I kind of like this for 2020. We might keep it. Hit that like button. If you're not yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button because we do this every week. So don't forget to hit that bell. Hit the bell so you get your notifications. And until next week, maybe watch something over here. Now watch my video. <laughs> I don't watch hers.